Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm it's Robbie Rhino and in today's video I have a full review for you of the Megadeth collaboration Peace Cells Leclerc Ares prototype and this is one of two vehicles available today on the 29th of August. You can get this vehicle which is the Cold War Megadeth collaboration or the Tier 8 American Premium Medium Tank, the M67 Soldier On. But today's video focuses on the Leclerc Ares prototype, which is a Western Alliance Era 3 heavy tank or main bow tank, if you will. We're going to start by having a look at the price of this vehicle. Then we will have a look over here on Excel compared to not only three bottom level Era 3 main battle tanks, but also the Leclerc Series 1, which is the French Era 3 top of the line main battle tank to see how the prototype compares. But... First, let's have a look at the price. If you like this review or another review and you like the look of the tank and you want to purchase it, how do you get it? Well, you have two options. You have the Megadeth Mega Bundle, which comes with both the Tier 8 vehicle and the Era 3 um, Ares prototype and a whole host of 2D and 3D Megadeth Commanders for 24,800 gold. But if you just want this tank on its own, you can get the Peace Sales Bundle, which is 14,400 gold gold so a quite a lot of money to spend on an era through premium tank however if you really love mega death um, or you want something that has really really nice dpm that's very competitive if you're a sort of average to good player then yeah i guess it would be worth it to you but we're going to head on over to excel have a look at the stats here of the leclerc aries prototype on the left compared to the macava mark one the leopard two and the m1 abrams then we'll compare to the leclerc series one i'll talk you through my commander and equipment setup take you to the garage show you the armor profile of this vehicle and then i've got three gameplays for you at the end to finish this review but as this is a premium vehicle it does earn a silver xp and commander xp bonus silver xp 50 percent xp 10 percent and commander xp 25 percent and this is quite a good premium tank for a free to play player if you don't like firing premium rounds as we're going to get on to in a bit the penetration is great and uh, yeah you can do very nice silver work with this vehicle but we're now going to get on into the raw stats of the leclerc aries prototype the peace cells and we're going to start with the hit points at 3600 which is the same as the leopard 2 better than the abrams and it's only 50 off the macabre mark 1 so in line with the other vehicles in this comparison and i chose them because they are similar in terms of their hit points they're kind of bottom level era 3 main battle tanks or heavy tanks so yeah not too bad there for the leclerc aries prototype plenty of hit points to play with Next, view range, best in class 5 or 6, 5 meters for a main battle tank. And when you are quite aggressive in this vehicle, I found myself getting quite a lot of spotting assistance with the Leclerc Aries prototype, especially if you use things like the combat rations or ventilation, it boosts it even further. You can do some quite good scout work with your main battle tank, which is a bonus for the Leclerc Aries prototype, much better than things like the M1 Abrams on the other two vehicles in this comparison. Next, mobility, and it's pretty good news for the Leclerc Ares prototype, 1500 horsepower engine, same as the Leopard 2 and M1 Abrams, and a lot better than the Macava Mark 1, and that translates into a 26.79 power to weight ratio, which is only a little bit off the Leopard 2 and M1 Abrams, and miles better than the Macava Mark 1. It gets up to speed quite nicely, and of course you can improve that if you choose to use the advanced power train. In terms of your top forward speed, 72.4 kilometers an hour, again, better than the Macava Mark 1, and it's the same as the M1 Abrams, but lagging behind the Leopard 2. The only real downside in terms of the mobility is the reverse speed at 32 kilometers an hour. If you want to improve that, you can use the traction system, which will boost it, like I have done to 35.2, but be careful when you're getting on ridge lines and people are chasing you. If you're reversing out of the way, they will just get to you and surround you and probably overpower you. So think about your positioning. You can get forwards very quickly, but reverse can catch you out a little bit. Miles off something like the Macava Mark 1 and uh, yeah, the M1 Abrams, which is 41.8 kilometers an hour in reverse. Next, hold traverse 44 degrees a second, which is best in class. So when you get up to your 
Top speed very nimble at getting your armor around to your opponents. And turret traverse 40 degrees a second, the same as all the tanks in this comparison. And when you add your gun handling skills to your commander, yeah, that goes up to 49.84 degrees a second. So your turret snaps round very nicely indeed. And now we're going to get on to the fun bit of the Leclerc Ares prototype, which is the gun, 120 millimeter gun. The Leopard 2 in this comparison has a 120 millimeter and the Macava and the M1 have 105 millimeter guns. So on the Leclerc Ares prototype, the piece sells, you have three flavors of ammunition, APF SDS as standard, premium APF SDS, and you also have heat rounds as your third ammunition selection, which is a bit disappointing that you don't have the high explosive squashed head, the Hesh or the HE, because heat is largely useless in era three because of all the composite and spaced armor. I don't carry any heat rounds. Um, but if you do so, you will have your alpha damage dropped from 550, which is the standard alpha damage on this vehicle, to 520. So you're even downgrading your alpha damage. I highly recommend not carrying many, if any, at all heat rounds. In terms of that alpha damage, so we just discussed 550 alpha damage, and you have fantastic penetration on your standard rounds at 633 millimeters, the best in this comparison. In terms of the... Um, premium round 700 millimeters so it's gone up by um, a nice amount there it's gone up by 67 millimeters to so 700 millimeters for that 550 alpha damage but if you're a free to play player you can just fire the standard rounds fantastic penetration more than enough to go through pretty much every tank frontally you will come across it might struggle against the 477a but what doesn't in era three and you also have best in class shell velocity great for sniping at mid to long range at 1790 meters a second lastly in terms of your heat round 600 millimeters of penetration so you're losing penetration losing alpha damage and shell velocity definitely not worth it in my opinion in terms of the penetration of the other vehicles, as you can see here, the M1 Abrams is the worst in comparison, so we'll change that to red. And the standard penetration on the Pro Ares prototype, much better than even the Macava Mark 1 and the Leopard 2. You have the higher alpha damage. Bear in mind the Macava Mark 1 has 80 GMs as its secondary ammunition selection, so it's going to have more penetration and out for damage but when we're talking about the single fire guns this gun is fantastic for shell velocity penetration and out for damage and when we're going to get on to the gun handling and dpm now you'll see much much better um dpm than the other vehicles barring the m1 abrams which is comparable so now we're going to get on to that gun handling we're going to look at the aim time first for the leclerc Ares prototype the piece sells 2.2 second aim time which is the worst in this comparison but not by a massive way the m1 abrams is out there in front at 1.5 seconds but all three of these tanks are comparable and you can get it down to a reasonable level i'd rather invest in the dpm and the accuracy than the aim time because it's already pretty respectable in terms of the accuracy 0.26 which is slightly worse than the macabre mark one and the leopard two there out in front at 0.23 but it is better than the m1 abrams and you can get it down to pinpoint accuracy levels if you invest in the gun with your setup i've got mine down to 0.21 which is fantastic and it's very accurate and very reliable um, in terms of the dpm this is the selling point in my opinion 4648 dpm which is two more than the m1 abrams which is notorious for having fantastic dpm but it does have that poor penetration on that vehicle whereas with the peace cells the claire Aries prototype you have that great penetration and it's miles better than the macabre mark one and the leopard two and if you invest in improving your dpm you can see here that i've got mine up to 6534 dpm taking a 7.1 second base um, reload time to 5.05 seconds in terms of the ammo capacity 65 rounds so you definitely can run out in longer drawn out battles best in this comparison goes to the macabre mark one um, however you have more rounds than the leopard 2 and the m1 abrams and lastly in terms of gun depression and elevation you have the worst in class in this comparison gun depression at eight degrees which can be a bit frustrating for some of the larger ridge lines but for the most part is pretty usable on most maps um, the macabre mark one only has 0.5 degrees more and one degree more for the Leopard 2 and the M1 Abrams and lastly you have the same gun elevation as the other three vehicles in this comparison at 20 degrees so a fantastic gun great shell velocity great penetration great DPM that is
is the selling point of this vehicle and it does have some armor to boot as we'll get on in just a little bit but we're going to quickly have a look at the stats of the Leclerc Aries prototype compared to the Leclerc Series 1 which is the big boy main battle French main battle tank in era 3 and we're going to see what differs just so you can see how good this premium vehicle is compared to its big brother so 3600 hit points you have 310 more on the Leclerc series one you have the same view range as the Leclerc series one the same ability apart from you have better hull traverse which is better at getting your armor around two vehicles the exact same gun with the fantastic penetration and shell velocity and nice alpha damage you lose 0.1 second aim time point uh zero two on your accuracy 0.24 for the Leclerc series one and that has a slightly better dpm at 4714 compared to 4648 on the Ares prototype which means it's 0.1 second worse reload than the Leclerc series one and the rest of it in terms of ammo capacity gun depression and gun elevation is the same so you're getting a premium tank which is almost identical apart from the hit point difference and gun handling uh, to the Leclerc series one so that bodes well for the firepower of this vehicle and now I'm going to talk you through my command and equipment setup tell you how that affects the stats or the base stats of the Leclerc Ares prototype then I'll take you to the garage show the armor profile and then we'll get stuck into the gameplay so in terms of my equipment I want to improve the DPM and I also want to try and improve the uh, mobility top forward and reverse speed by a little bit so I've chosen to run the advanced loader improve ventilation and the traction system as my piece of mobility equipment if you're not too worried about improving the DPM anymore you could take out the ventilation and maybe put the advanced powertrain as well to get up your rallying speed and do some nice running damage and in terms of my commander I run six cents born leader rapid loading steady aim rapid aim snapshot run and gun armor angling and track mechanics so in terms of my commander six sense and born leader is standard rapid loading to help the dpm four gun handling skills to get it as accurate as possible and on the move this feels very accurate indeed armor angling to reduce the amount of damage that i'm taking by five percent and track mechanics i don't want to get tracked out in the open although you could invest maybe in another piece of mobility on your commander to help out with the off-road driving or clutch braking something like that i guess there's a skill up for grabs there you can tweak it to your liking but if you run the exact same setup as me you'll be looking at improving your view range to 625 meters so very good for spotting for a main battle tank and in terms of your mobility power to weight ratio has gone up to 28.85 because i do run combat rations as well as the traction system top forward speed just shy of 80 kilometers an hour at 79.64 kilometers an hour and that poor 32 kilometers an hour reverse speed hasn't gone up by a lot um, but every little helps at 35.2 kilometers an hour backwards and hold reverse gone up to 48.4 degrees a second from 44 and turret traverse has gone up quite dramatically to 49.84 degrees a second meaning the turret snaps around on my opponents very quickly indeed and lastly in terms of gun handling and dpm aim times dropped from 2.2 to 1.99 seconds accuracy from 0.26 to 0.21 dpm gone up dramatically because we're investing a lot of commander and equipment setup into the dpm gone up to 6534 from 4648 which means i now reload instead of 7.1 seconds base in 5.05 seconds so you get the range out extremely quickly and with that nice 550 alpha damage with your standard and premium apfs rounds you can deal a lot of damage in a very quick time so that's it for talking about my commander and equipment setup i'm now going to take you to the garage show the armor profile because there's some pretty nice armor on the p-cells leclerc Ares prototype and then we're going to get stuck into the first of three gameplays so i'll see you over in the garage in just a second so here we are in the garage having a look at the armor viewer of the Peace Cells Leclerc Ares prototype. There are many, many sections of armor. So I'm going to go through the highlights of what I want you to know and what I found out during my play session. Um, I'm going to tell you straight off the bat, when you are hold down using your eight degrees of gun depression in this vehicle, 
it's a very very powerful turret apart from that green section which is 200 millimeters i'll go to that now for you if you are struggling to go through the front of this turret and you don't have the best penetration the best part is that little small square there 200 millimeters there's some more sections behind it but that's the best part to go through the viewport isn't a hitbox you can damage the viewport itself but you won't be able to do any actual damage to the vehicle very good hold down high penetration will still go through but mid to low penetration will definitely struggle the next thing i want you to know is this shot trap on the leclerc aries prototype 500 millimeter this isn't the lower plate it's kind of the mid bar it's well angled downwards and at an angle of 40 to 45 degrees this will ricochet shells and auto cannons won't be able to go through this and there's also some space armor sections in behind which will protect against atgms if you want to penetrate from the front with atgms or auto cannons the best section to go for is this section here which is the actual lower plate 20 millimeters and 60 millimeters respectively down there and you will be able to go through with he sometimes but mainly ATGMs and also auto cannons with decent penetration can go through. Uh, bear in mind there are sections of composite armor which are 60 millimeters to the left and right um, sort of over the drive wheel and towards the front kind of quarter of this tank so don't shoot there with ATGMs. If you want to penetrate from the side of ATGMs the central part of the turret or the actual central um, part just above the tracks you should be able to go through to the rear of the turrets composite armor and there is also some space armor over the tracks which protect against ATGMs. The actual upper plate itself is 200 millimeters and as you can see it's quite well angled so depending what angle you're shooting at sometimes you'll ricochet if you're slightly above it or you're face hugging and you can shoot down into this you're going to go through no problem. Um, but but all in all of this vehicle, what you want to know is that the turret is very strong, even more so when you're using eight degrees of gun depression. That mid bars are 500 millimeters, that orange one there, and that's a shot trap, especially coming around a corner. You want to aim for the lower, lower portion, which has 60 millimeters of armor at the thickest point. The actual side of this armor of this tank is very weak indeed. Um, you can see here that it's got 20 millimeters of side armor towards the sort of rear third and also just above the sort of wheels there on the tracks. And most guns are gonna be able to overmatch this if you try and side scrape. The only reason to side scrape is to minimize the amount of tank they have to shoot and also to bait people into shooting the side with ATGMs or HE. Apart from that, um, auto cannons won't overmatch, but pretty much every gun you come across will. If you're trying to shoot ATGM's side central turret to the rear or that lower, lower plate, get hold down in this vehicle, wiggle as much as possible, use your speed to advance on people so they can't hit your lower plate and just hope they're auto aiming and bouncing off your upper plate and your mid part. But yeah, hold down's the, the main thing this vehicle's good at. And if you wanna go through the turret, the best chance to the left of the gun um, in the central part of the turret. But that's all I can really tell you about the armor of this vehicle. It's one of those that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let me know in the comments what you found works for you. And we're now gonna head on into the first of three gameplays. So we are now on Fred Vang in the peace cells and for the first 10 seconds of this battle I am on my phone doing something and then I do realize eventually that the battle has begun so as we get going now you can see the mobility of the peace cells pretty quick to get going for a main battle tank not the quickest but definitely not the worst in era 3 it keeps up with the flow of the battle and we have got our traction system on this vehicle in this gameplay so when we do get up to top speed pretty quick it's pretty decent at ramming especially against light tanks of course and uh, when you do get up to top speed it's pretty nimble with that good hold traverse and turret traverse it's snapping your armor around snapping your gun around and uh, doing some good work whilst you are on the move and run and go and works very nicely with this tank very accurate on the move and yeah it just feels like it's a fantastic gun uh, when you're hold down and friendly to your opponents the armor can work it's kind of a 50 50 um, but the turret's pretty good and that mid plate is a little bit of a shot trap it's got just enough armor 
to be able to keep you in the game with that nice healthy slug of hit points 3600 you have that fantastic shell velocity really nice accuracy especially when you improve it with your commander and equipment setup you can see that we're snapping shells in not having to give too much lead and yeah you've got to be kind of patient to start off the battle either go with a push like our tanks have done here on the southeast or you can come up here and support your tank destroyers or support a flank from a distance if you get outnumbered that's when this thing becomes really really weak because the side armor is crap you can't side scrape and as soon as they get around to the side things like ATGM Hesh uh, will be able to go through you very very easily and auto cannons but we're just using the true vision system here trying to get some snipes off we saw a Jaguar one run away there in the background very dangerous uh, tank to have um, the only real thing that holds main battle tanks back now is of course the Vizel 1A1 tow and the Jaguar one and the horrible horrible object 477A which is incredibly OP and yeah I'm guessing they won't ever do anything about that because people will want to buy it but that's for another day we've picked up 2.1k damage in a couple of minutes so not the absolute worst but not kind of where I want it to be however we have to be very careful because there are only three of us here in the center of the map we could be being flanked but I'm just going to try and keep this gun singing and to get the most out of this vehicle you really do have to be quite aggressive at exposing yourself go hold down behind rocks like we're doing here and you really do have to take chancy shots if you want to have big damage games if you are a player who's maybe new to the game or you're not too confident at using high DPM sort of lower alpha damage guns then of course things like the object 292 or the object 477A will do much better for you. You can sit back kind of snipe a little bit more and play it a little bit more safe but when you get going in this vehicle and you get into the flow it really can pick up damage very very quickly indeed and it doesn't take too long especially now we've got our DPM up to 6534 with my setup if you run the same setup that I showed at the start of this video during these stats comparison yeah you can pick apart tanks very quickly it's fantastic at keeping tanks tracked in place because the reload is five seconds and when you actively use the combat rations like i do then you can get that down to sort of sub five seconds if you were to use adrenaline rush when you are low on hit points it would be even better but yeah the dpm is fantastic this gun is absolutely brilliant um you were only kind of held back really by the side armor and yeah the fact that there are op tanks in era three but trying to get some shots here on the move as you can see the reverse speed even though we've boosted it isn't the best trying to ask, ask my uh, friendly tank destroyers there for some help um, when you do start having to face more than one opponent at a time you can obviously face the strongest parts of your armor to both at the same time so you will start taking damage but you do have that healthy slug at 3600 to be able to keep in the battle unfortunately really really bad aiming there however you reload so quickly it doesn't really matter if you miss a shell sometimes because you're reloaded so quickly the battle's quite close we're up by a tank it's nine versus eight it looks like all of the tanks have now bunched up on the enemy team in this section so we're going to come over here use the eight degrees of gun depression more than enough to use most ridge lines on most maps and now we're going to put this dpm to work and with that nice sort of boost over things like the leopard 2 in terms of alpha damage at 550 it doesn't take long before you're racking up the damage you know within um, just over 10 seconds you're able to deal 1100 damage so yeah think of that what you will very very dangerous tank if it has your side or it's kept you in place now we're just going to wait for our shot on the back of the uh, object 292 he gets taken now we are up by a tank but they're all kind of in the same position we've got some very healthy tanks on our team left and now we can just push the advantage and now i'm going to use the weight of this tank against a light tank and absolutely crush that ma ags get behind this object 477a and this is when this thing is absolutely voracious it uh, tears for opponents when you have their sort of sides in rear and or they're distracted you can put a lot of damage very very quickly indeed and as you can see in this game we sort of started off quite slowly um, being careful in the center but as soon as you sort of go in and you have support uh, yeah this tank is very dangerous and I imagine if you are 
um, in a platoon of vehicles like this, then yeah, it can become um, very game changing indeed. Two tanks left on the enemy team. We're going to hunt down this AMX um, 40 and hopefully we're able to um, get at least one, hopefully two rounds into him. We're going to have to aim there with our free aim on the move, no problem at this distance, especially with run and gun as a commander skill. Free aim in again, we track him in place, do some nice fire damage, and now it's just the enemy tank destroyer left, which is a thumper, and we're just gonna advance. We've got the hit points to take one shot at least. Hopefully we can either get a tracking shot like we did there, or we can get some damage. I'm wiggling as much as possible on my approach to this thumper, but that does have great penetration, so I'm probably going to be taking some damage. Um, fortunately, we actually bounced there. And as you can see, we have blocked 2,395. Showing you the armor does work relatively well for a main battle tank. Not the best, but enough to keep you in the game. And we finished that on Fred Fang with a victory. Lovely profit with or without a premium account. High caliber mastery badge, 1,782 experience, 3 kills, 12,008 damage, 59 assistance, and that 2,395 blocked. So that's it for the first game. We're now going to head on into the second game, so I'll see you over there in just a second. So now we're on vineyards in the Peace Cells Leclerc Ares prototype. We're in a standard battle. We've spawned down the zero line, and I'm just going to head straight ahead of me to that building, try and get some snipes off towards the center of the map and also towards the north at people crossing into that brawling location which is situated in A5, A6. And yeah, try and get some early damage off. 8 degrees is enough to use this position. We've got some hard cover to our left. And yeah, just checking the team list for dangerous tanks. Things like the Jaguar 1 and Object 477A that can take my health off very quickly indeed. You're going to get a nice indication here of that great shell velocity. It really flies in very, very quickly indeed. I haven't really had to ever switch to the premium rounds in the piece cells because the standard penetration is so good at 633 and yeah it can only get better when you add in that 700 millimeters of premium penetration but like i said in the stats comparison it's a very good tank for a free to play player you don't have to fire any premium at all great penetration for a premium tank and uh, yeah especially if you're a kind of average to good player you can do very well in this vehicle if you're a newer player you might struggle because of the side armor and because of the fact that you do have to expose yourself to get the damage out lower kind of alpha damage compared to things like the 477a and the object 292 just trying to let my team know that are in the sort of southeast on that sniping hill that you know there's hardly any of us but i'm gonna sit here and just try and defend this location defend our base and i can always kind of fall back get some vision out for my team that's situated on that sniping hill and as you can see we have already picked up 2.2k assistance and on certain maps large open maps i found that i'm getting a lot of assistance compared to other main battle tanks because of that great view range <laughs> as we watch the bmp3 there um go back to the garage in the first two minutes a little bit too quickly than i'm sure he would have hoped but we've picked also picked up 1625 damage and we're just trying to get shots out when we can um, very nice juicy target in the Jaguar one there. Very dangerous tank, so I'm going to try and get as many damage and shots into him and hopefully take him out of the battle. And yeah, you've just got to keep popping up on these ridge lines, finding these ridge lines that are good for 8 degrees of gun depression, and then putting your gun to work. Um, and that's all that there is to say really about this vehicle. It's a very competitive vehicle. It's um, a very kind of standard main battle tank kind of vehicle if you're used to playing the m1 abrams or the challenger or the leopard 2 anything like that very very similar indeed you get hold down and you just let your gun sing if you're wondering why i'm reversing slowly in the open it's because i just did not want to put my side to any opponents in case what's spotting me is a jaguar one or something that is quite sneaky. I want to keep all of the composite and the spaced armor that I have and the strongest parts of the armor at the front towards the ATGMs that might be incoming. Get down to the train tracks and now I can reset and defend the base from this uh, position here in F0. T72BU capturing the base. And as we pop up, of course, we will be getting some nice juicy spotting assistance. Jaguar 1 coming inbound. We've got great hold traverse, keeping all of our armor um, as 
well angled towards Jaggy One as possible. I was going to pop up, try and finish him off there, but I would have got tagged from behind. So just defending this position, very, very aware that this Jaguar One is here, probably going to be coming in. If you're not the best at aiming, it's going to be pretty good at uh, auto aiming like most tanks are in Era 3, but especially with this tank and run and gun, it works very well. However, I do recommend always aiming as much as possible. And when you're on a ridge line, you want to move around sort of side to side as much as possible. Don't just sit still because they will be able to find weak spots in your turret. But when you are hold down, when you're moving, this turret can be very strong indeed. And yeah, it's a pretty good frontal facing main battle tank. Um, pretty expensive, but if you love Megadeth and you like the high DPM, I guess it'll be worth it. Um, and uh, in terms of the skin, um, I guess it's a little bit lackluster. I wasn't sure what I was expecting in terms of the Megadeth and the Sabaton collection. It's not the best, but yeah, it's not the worst skin that they've put out. At least it's not like a Acromantula kind of thing with um, <laughs> spider legs and all that dangling off the side. But in terms of this game, it's looking pretty bleak. We're down by four tanks. 219 manages to get one into me. I didn't think he was actually aiming, but he snapped one in there. And yeah, we lost a big slack of our hit points. And it looks like we're going to have to advance here behind this rock and just get as many shots in to end this game as possible. We've picked up a nice combined damage game here. 6.4k direct 5.1k assistance it's got a couple of kills and now we're just going to try and put our last remaining rounds of this battle in as we are going to get eventually outnumbered um not able to put the sort of influence in this battle or enough of an influence to win but still a pretty decent result and if i was looking to just grind silver yeah something like this is an absolutely fantastic tank with a 50 percent silver bonus and the capacity to do a lot of damage very very quickly indeed if you're very aggressive very confident at playing your main battle tanks this will do very nicely very accurate there snapping those shells in at mid to sort of close range here and it's very very reliable with its 120 millimeter we're the only tank left amx 40 is advancing just trying to wiggle as much as possible you can see that we have bounced 1600 and we have managed to boost our damage total very nicely indeed in that sort of minute where we were being extremely outnumbered unfortunately it's a defeat there but we still picked up a pretty nice result there on vineyards we picked up a nice profit with about a premium account we got those two kills 9.7k direct and 5.1k assistance uh, just showing you that you really can get some nice assistance with this main battle tank and yeah a pretty decent game there on vineyards for our second gameplay 14.9k combined and now we're going to head on into the third and final game to show you what this vehicle is capable of on a different map so i'll see you over there in just a second so here we are on serene coast in the peace cells leclerc Ares prototype and we have spawned in a standard battle in the north and we're going to make our way down to this corridor towards the sort of one and two lines and it's the perfect kind of map for a tank like this where we can go down using our eight degrees of gun depression on a ridge line it's quite um corridor-esque on this map in terms of they're not going to be able to flank us very easily here we can sort of sit king of the ridge put our gun to work as tanks advance underneath us and then if needs to we can reverse up and all of the tanks that are situated in the north will be able to support us or at least i hope they will be able to support us if we start to get challenged by all of these tanks this challenger one comes up i'm gonna track that challenger one in place so i get some nice juicy tracking assistance another one through there keeping him tracked i'm gonna back off now because it looks like they're just going to absolutely plow over back another ridge line and now we can support our heavy tank to the right of us as he is getting um pressured by the tank destroyer and the challenger too however we do have a visual 101 tow behind us who absolutely slaps that challenger 2 back to the garage and we're just putting this absolutely ferocious gun to work here tracking that thumper in place i'm um, gonna be firing here on the move unfortunately i didn't check that there's a rock behind us so that does mean that we're gonna take a little bit of damage i hope we didn't but we have blocked 1240 showing you that it's not too bad for blocking damage as well that challenger 2 
gets one into us, but we are going to absolutely ruin this Challenger 2's game. We're already up to a massive combined game in the first sort of two minutes of this battle, and we're just putting round after round through the front with standard rounds of this Challenger 2. As you can see, we haven't had to switch to our premium APF SDS rounds at all. And now that it looks like the AMX32 and the uh, Challenger have fallen back a little bit, maybe we can go and advance and help out this medium tank we're up by three tanks we have some heavy tanks defending our base um unfortunately i drive like a complete pillock there into that dead wreck but we are going to get up on this ridge and we're going to pressure this challenger to hopefully take him out of the game gonna be aiming really really badly here not where i should be aiming at all and um, bounce off the challenger then we bounce off again um unfortunately that has cost me a little bit of damage. However, we're just going to push now as that tank is getting taken out. AMX 32, that shot would have gone in, but I hit the barrel because I auto aim like a complete scrub, which means that we only get one shout into him. Now I'm trying to reverse up as this heavy tank is kind of going forwards. I'm trying to reverse up out of way of the thumper, probably bad driving on both of our accounts there. I could have just stopped reversing. However, we didn't take any damage, they didn't take any damage, so yeah, I guess we both got out of that situation okay. And now we're just going to try and advance the battle. Um, however, we do notice we are being um, at risk of being captured by the enemy team in terms of our base. So we're going to just turn around, go to this ridge line, which is perfect for defending our capture circle. And now we're going to try and unleash this gun on the enemy team. We're going to track this 292 in place. I was hoping I might be able to do a bit of damage. Go a little bit further to the left so we have more gun depression. And now we can just rock backwards and forwards side to side on this ridge line and put some beautiful damage into these two tanks. Our turret should be pretty strong, especially from this mid range at like 330 meters. And we're going to put round after round into these tanks. Unfortunately, there, I completely whiff that shell into the building. Should have been able to take that tank out. Didn't get my gun low enough there, and I'm starting to aim like an idiot. We have got a T-72BU who has gone in, and I'm trying to support him as best I can, but every shot now is going to bounce for the next kind of minute. And some of the shots badly aimed, some of the shots RNG is just kicking my ass. Again, that bounces where it really should penetrate. Enough penetration to go through the side and the rear of this 292. But again, it bounces. However, we do finally get one in after what feels like an absolute age. And now we're going to try and aim on this 292 on the move. Unfortunately, what's going to happen is... A little bit of micro lag what it looks like here i did feign to go back to the garage but i'm not going to go back to the garage we bounce our shell again and this t is living a really really charmed life he does get taken out by the 477a who else would take out a tank and now we can turn our attention to the last remaining tank on the enemy team the m1 which we compared this vehicle to earlier and we have a great reload meaning we can get two shells snap one in there with a great shell velocity i should have had a lot more damage in this game however part bad aim part bad rng we still did enough to take down the victory there we finished with 10,916 direct damage we didn't get any kills but we finished in the mvp slot nice profit with or without a premium account mastery badge and confederate badge 3,548 assistance 1720 three base experience points in a nice game there on Serene Coast with a 14.4k combined damage game and a victory. So that's it for my review of the Peace Cells Declare Ares prototype. It's a very, very capable tank. It's very good on a ridgeline. 8 degrees of gun depression is more than enough. The gun's brilliant. Fantastic standard penetration. Great for a free-to-play player. Keep your frontal armor and your turret armor to your opponents as best as possible. Yeah, and you should be good to go in this vehicle the only downside is the price but that's to be expected with a collaboration but let me know what you think of this review in the comments below um, and let me know if you have picked up this vehicle and what you think of it and until next time i'll see you on the battlefield and bye for now